Den of Thieves is set in Los Angeles, where an armored truck appears to stop in front of a convenience store. When the driver and several police officers escorting the truck were about to return after buying coffee and some snacks, they were suddenly confronted by a group of robbers. The police tried to put up a fight, so a shootout was inevitable and left several people dead from both sides. Luckily, help arrived immediately after the truck driver activated the emergency signal. However, the police soon became overwhelmed because the band of robbers seemed to be very experienced in dealing with very intense and deadly shooting situations. For this reason, the local police immediately asked the headquarters for help. Knowing that more police forces are coming, the robbers rush to escape from there with the help of one of their members, a man named Mac, who directs them to a hiding place with a GPS tracker. Not long after, the band of robbers finally arrived at their hideout. Judging from their fighting ability in the crossfire, they turned out to be a former member of the special forces in the Marines, consisting of Ray Mariman, the leader of the team, and Son Levu, who was Ray's right-hand man, Donnie Wilson, the driver, and also Bosco Ostroman. The four men had been removed from the military because they had committed serious violations and had been thrown into prison. The scene then switches and shows a man named Nick O'Brien, who appears to have only arrived at his house early this morning because he had partied all night with his colleagues. Nick, who doesn't want his wife to be angry for not coming home last night, sneaks into his house through the window. However, his wife, Debbie, already knew of Nick's arrival and then confronted him. Because she couldn't stand the behavior of Nick who often had an affair, Debbie decided to leave him and take their kids with her to leave the house. Nick tries to apologize to Debbie, but it's too late, and now his household is on the verge of collapse. Shortly afterward, Nick, who is a detective in the Los Angeles Police Department, received a report about the robbery and shooting incident that occurred last night. Nick rushed to the crime scene to investigate the incident. Knowing that the robbers had left their car, Nick then asked the forensic officer to check the fingerprints of the robbers that may have been left in the car. But as it turned out, the forensics team found nothing and found the remains of a special material that the robbers used to erase their fingerprints. Hearing this, Nick concluded that the band of robbers was highly trained and professional. From a distance, Bosco can be seen spying on Nick and the other cops to find out about them. Levo then tells Ray that Nick O'Brien is one of the best police detectives in the LAPD and won't hesitate to take out the criminals who cause trouble in his area. The scene then switches and shows Nick discussing last night's incident with some of his men. Nick wonders why the robbers were after the unloaded armored truck and concludes that they are up to something with the truck. One of Nick's men thinks that Ray Mariman, a robber who has just been released on parole, might be the mastermind behind last night's shooting incident. After getting information about Mariman, Nick and his team then kidnap Donnie who works as a bartender. Nick, who has evidence that Donnie and Mariman know each other, forces the man to reveal Mariman's robbery plan. In a state of urgency, Donnie confessed to Nick that he was recruited as a driver because they lacked personnel. Donnie admits that he needs money, so he can't help but accept Ray's offer to carry out a robbery as the driver. Donnie then explains the large amount of cash stolen from the stadium by Ray and his crew, but Donnie denied that he knew of Ray and his crew's next plans. After getting the information he needed, Nick then freed Donnie and asked him to be his spy and report all activities carried out by Ray and his crew. Long story short, Ray and his crew, including Donnie, are observing the situation at the Federal Reserve Bank of downtown Los Angeles, which will be the target of their next robbery. The bank was one of the most secure and highly guarded banks, so it would not be easy for them to commit a robbery there. However, Ray plans to rob $30 million in old printed cash which serial numbers cannot be traced before the money is destroyed. Knowing this, Ray's crew became very excited to immediately carry out the robbery. While Donnie studies several routes around the bank that could be used for escape routes, Ray and his crew return to their hideout to strategize. On the other hand, Nick is approached by a lawyer who informs him that his wife has filed for divorce. Hearing this, Nick looked so shocked and did not expect that Debbie would actually divorce him. A few days later, Nick and his team tail Donnie, disguised as a Chinese food delivery driver, and allow him to deliver food into the Federal Reserve. Donnie was apparently planning to check inside the Federal Reserve and smuggle something he put in the air vent above the toilet. In the evening, Ray and his crew gathered at a restaurant for dinner. But then, Nick came there and greeted Donnie as if they were old friends. Nick turned out to be trying to provoke Ray so that he got emotional and Nick had a reason to capture him. But his plan failed because Ray was able to control himself. However, his confrontation with Nick leads Ray and his crew to suspect Donnie of being a police informant. Donnie was threatened at gunpoint, so he admitted that he had been interrogated by Nick some time ago over an armored truck robbery incident. Hearing Donnie's confession, 
Ray surprisingly orders Donnie to tell Nick about their impending robbery. The next day, an annoyed Donnie goes to Nick for getting himself into trouble. On Ray's orders, Donnie then told Nick about the robbery they were about to do, but refused to reveal the location. That night, Nick goes to a nightclub and meets a stripper named Maloa who then seduces Nick. But it turns out that all of that was Ray's strategy because she was Ray's girlfriend. Ray then tells Nick that they are going to rob Pico Rivera's bank. The next day, Nick is seen visiting his daughter at school to say goodbye because he probably won't see her very often if he and Debbie are officially divorced. Long story short, on the day of the heist, Ray and his crew had prepared to carry out the robbery according to what they had planned. On the other hand, Nick and his team are also prepared with weapons and ammunition to thwart the robbery. Ray and his crew had everyone at Pico Rivera's bank hostage when Nick and his team got there. Ray then urged the bank's manager to call the police and demand a ransom of $10 million and a helicopter full of fuel. Knowing the robbers' demands, the FBI who was also there then tried to negotiate with the robbers. However, Ray and his crew refused to negotiate with the FBI and threatened to kill the hostages if they insisted on negotiating. While the FBI was still negotiating, Ray and his crew appeared to have executed one of the female hostages, so the FBI finally complied with the robbers' wishes and asked for 90 minutes to prepare everything. Ray, who managed to get Nick's cell phone number from Maloa, then contacted Nick to make fun of him and the police, and emphasized that his crew was not an ordinary gang of robbers and no one could stop their robbery. Meanwhile elsewhere, Mac manages to hijack communication channels between the Federal Reserve Bank and security firm Alameda that mentions sending money from Pico Rivera's bank to the Federal Reserve Bank. Because of this, Ray and his crew committed a robbery at the Pico Rivera Bank and planned to take over the remittances from there, so that they could easily enter the Federal Reserve Bank. Ray and his crew then access the vault in the bank and detonate explosives inside. However, Nick soon realized that the explosion was not the usual modus operandi used by Ray and his gang. One of the FBI agents who was there thought the robbers might want to blow up the vault, but Nick doesn't seem to think so. He then impatiently bursts into the bank alone and finds that all the hostages are alive, bound and their heads covered. Meanwhile, the robbers turned out to have made a hole connected to the water line and managed to escape from there. Ray and his crew then began carrying out their real plan, which was to rob the Federal Reserve Bank. Nick rushes to check the waterways into which Ray and his gang escape, and finally realizes that their target is actually the Federal Reserve Bank. Elsewhere, Ray and his right-hand man Levu infiltrate the Federal Reserve Bank, using a stolen armored truck and cash from the stadium and disguise themselves as guards for the Alameda company that delivers the cash. Meanwhile, Donnie, who was hiding in a trolley filled with money, was pushed into the counting room to carry out his next plan. When Bosco makes a brief blackout at the bank and manages to trick the guards in the counting room, Donnie rushes out of hiding and activates an electromagnetic pulse to disrupt the room's surveillance camera system. When all the CCTV cameras in the room had been deactivated, Donnie immediately put the cash into a plastic trash bag that had been prepared. After collecting the money and smuggling it in the trash, Donnie hurriedly crawled out through the air duct leading to the toilet, where he then took the bag of food he had previously prepared there and then left the building in his delivery courier uniform, coinciding with Ray and Levu who gone from there. Not long after, a garbage truck came there to pick up the trash, as well as a garbage bag filled with money. Ray and his gang immediately intercepted the truck and took the bags and rushed off. To clear the trail, Ray and his crew then head to a car wreck repair shop to destroy the armored truck they stole and switch to another car to outwit the police investigation. However, Nick manages to catch Donnie and forces him to reveal Ray and his crew's escape route. Donnie then told Nick that Ray was at a junk car repair shop. Nick and his team rushed there and handcuffed Donnie in their car. Before arriving at the wrecked car repair shop, Nick and his team saw Ray riding in a black car and immediately chased after him. On the other hand, Ray and his crew who are stuck in a traffic jam see Nick and his team approaching. They immediately prepared weapons. Meanwhile, Nick orders his men to warn people to get out of there immediately to avoid civilian casualties. A fierce firefight is inevitable, and Bosco and a policeman are killed in the deadly gun battle. In an increasingly desperate situation, Ray and Levo decided to escape on foot. Nick did not stay silent, and immediately chased after them. Another shootout occurs between them, and Nick manages to shoot down Levu, killing him. After that, Ray tried to run away but Nick continued to chase him and managed to fire several shots into the part of his chest that was not protected by his bulletproof vest. Despite being badly injured, Ray refuses to give up and keeps his empty gun pointed at Nick, forcing Nick to fatally shoot him. After it was all over, Nick then returned to the car and found that Donnie had escaped. 
Meanwhile, instead of containing money, the trash bag found in Ray's car is filled with scraps of paper, and they wonder where all the money has gone. Nick then revisits the bar where Donnie works only to find that he has quit. Seeing a bar frequented by Federal Reserve employees and seeing a photo of Donnie with his friends, Nick finally realizes that Donnie is the real mastermind of the bank robbery. By working at the bar and gathering information from bar patrons, Donnie is able to plan an entire heist and recruits his friends to intercept a trash bag filled with money and replace it with a bag filled with torn pieces of paper when Ray and his crew retrieve it. After that, Donnie smuggled the cash into Panama and fled with his henchmen. At the end of the film, Donnie is seen working in a bar in London, which is located directly across from the Diamond Exchange, which will be his next target.